The first speaker is Professor Takahira Tanaka from Kyoto University uh, with uh, the talk entitled Test and Modified Gravity Using Gravitational Wave Observations. So please, yeah. uh, you, you have 30 minutes and plus uh, 10 minutes for questions. Okay. Thank you very much for the intro introduction. And uh, so it's a pity that uh, we we cannot have a drinking party. <laughs> but uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, so today uh, I'd like to talk about uh, this uh, kind of topic. And uh, so this is uh, part of the, the project uh, uh, of the, our big grant. Uh, our grant has started in uh, so, uh, summer of 2017. So this is the uh, last year. And uh, so there are many uh, projects, and uh, one of them is uh, our project uh, that is uh, uh, testing gravity using gravitational waves. Uh, that is the title of my talk. And uh, there are several members, uh, many members. And so the, this is uh, uh, so the, today's talk is uh, based on uh, these collaboration, this collaboration. And there are many uh, uh, works that are uh, uh, going on uh, in parallel. Uh, but uh, today I'd like to focus on uh, these uh, red one parts. And one is uh, about the black hole echoes. And uh, uh, so we have uh, published uh, several papers and uh, some analysis, new analysis is on, uh, going on. And uh, uh, another issue is about the uh, uh, impact of the reflective boundary uh, near the horizon of MD that is also related to this uh, echo thing. And uh, so uh, I will introduce uh, this work. And, uh, and also the, uh, we are also working on the gravitational waves uh, from the action crowds uh, with the self-interaction. Self so I, I'd like to introduce uh, this work too. Uh, so the, uh, mostly the, our project is uh, you know, uh, focusing on the, the actual data analysis, but uh, today's talk is uh, more uh, theory oriented. Okay. So, so first, uh, let, let's, let's start uh, with this uh, action stuff. So the, the question is how to probe uh, string action uh, using gravitational waves. And as you, you may know that the so super radiant instability <coughs> uh, will uh, generate a crowd around the rotating black holes. Uh, that is, uh, yeah. Uh, and so this is a wave version of the Penrod process. And so from this crowd, of course, uh, uh, the gravitational wave uh, emission uh, is uh, expected. And uh, so, the, so there is a possibility of the direct detection or some uh, gravitational background detection, uh, but uh, this has not been done yet. And uh, uh, another way to probe uh, the, this kind of, pro uh, uh, this kind of uh, crowds is an uh, indirect way uh, that is, uh, uh, so uh, highly spinning uh, black holes are unlikely to exist uh, if the crowd exists because uh, the, this uh, action crowd uh, can extract uh, the energy and also uh, angular momentum of the black hole. Actually, the uh, extraction of uh, uh, angular momentum is uh, more efficient. And so the black hole spin is reduced significantly. So that if the action exists in proper uh, parameter range, um, uh, parameter means the mass of the action. Uh, so in that case, uh, the highly spinning black holes are quite unlikely to exist. And uh, already, so the, there are several papers uh, that, tells, uh, <coughs> that tell uh, the constraint uh, on the action mass, uh, uh, mass parameters. Uh, however, the, uh, in these work uh, growth, of the crowd is assumed to be exponential. And uh, <coughs> uh, the existence uh, probability of black holes with a spin uh, which satisfy this condition, uh, crowd growth time scale is less than uh, age of the universe or the accretion time scale. So accretion time scale here means that uh, that is the spin up time scale. Uh, so the, if this uh, time scale is uh, longer uh, than the, this uh, crowd growth, uh, uh, growth time scale, uh, uh, then <coughs> uh, crowd growth time scale is so shorter. And so, the, uh, so, so this angular momentum extraction is uh, so efficient. And so the, that kind of uh, parameter region uh, for the black hole uh, should not exist. 
so often. Uh, <coughs> however, the, this picture may change uh, once we in, uh, take into account the effect of interaction. So the, uh, we focus on the action self interaction. Okay. So, so, so the action. Uh, uh, take yeah. a Sorry for interrupting you. When you, you talk about clouds, do you mean something similar to the solution of Herdeira and, and Rado, of uh, of uh, care black holes uh, are surrounded by a cloud of a uh, uh, spinning um, uh, complex uh, scalar field? Is it similar? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, thank I you. I think so, yeah. Yeah. Um, and. <clears throat> Yeah, actually, so the, uh, uh, when the cloud uh, radius is large, uh, so in that case, uh, this is uh, something uh, like uh, uh, the uh, hydrogen atom. The eigenstate of the hydro hydrogen atom. Okay. And, uh, but uh, what's, so, the, so uh, our focus is on the, the action self interaction. So the typically action has uh, this kind of a cosine type potential. Of course, uh, uh, there is some possibility that uh, this uh, potential is more modified. But uh, yeah, here we consider this a simple, uh, uh, simple <laughs> model. Uh, anyway, so if we expand, then we have this uh, quadratic term and uh, this uh, chaotic term. So anyway, so whatever form of the, uh, <laughs> the potential that we have, this kind of interaction, uh, the expansion of the interaction. And uh, so, so this is the same. And uh, so naive idea is that cloud growth uh, may saturate much earlier uh, because uh, the saturate might be, uh, saturation might be caused due to the radiation uh, to the infinity. Uh, so if uh, we take into account the self interaction, then uh, uh, so, so this uh, can cause uh, the radiation to the infinity. And uh, so this A is the amplitude of the action cloud. And so the, here the, uh, we consider this uh, uh, cultic uh, interaction. And so the, uh, when we write down the, the equation motion, then the cubic term appears. So that becomes a source, source of the radiation. And so the, uh, you see the energy flux or angular momentum flux is uh, uh, quadratic in the uh, asymptotic amplitude of the wave. And so the, uh, it's proportional to A to six. So the, at the beginning, the, this is very small, but uh, once the amplitude becomes a little bit large, then uh, you know, significant uh, radiation is expected. And uh, uh, in the same way, the fallback of the action crowd to the black hole uh, might be uh, expected. So the, if, uh, and the, uh, another observation is that even if the crowd grows until the non-linearity, becomes significant, uh, uh, even in that case, the cloud mass is much smaller than the black hole mass. Uh, so the, you see, so that we have the, the this, uh, uh, mass term, and the, this is interaction term. So the, the, when the saturation occurs, maybe so this term and the, this term uh, will balance with each other. And then the amplitude is estimated uh, like this. Okay, phi square amplitude is uh, mu square, this is your mass, and the lambda is uh, this interaction equation. Uh, and uh, so, the, so, so by this ratio, the, we, we, have, uh, we can uh, estimate uh, the, the value of phi square. And <coughs> then uh, uh, the crowd mass uh, will be uh, estimated uh, like this. So the mu, uh, is, uh, mu inverse is the size of the crowd, typically. And so mu to minus third, uh, is uh, the volume uh, and the uh, mu square is the uh, energy density of the crowd. Uh, no, this is a mass. Uh, and uh, of course, no, this must be uh, multiplied, multiplied by the amplitude uh, of the, the, uh, the, the, the action, phi square. So there is a uh, mu square over lambda, this one, this factor. And then uh, this uh, can be written this way. So FA uh, was uh, this one. So this is a uh, you know, action decay const uh, d d d d d d parameter, and uh, <coughs> uh, so so typically so this is much smaller in front, and so the uh, so uh, yeah of course the cloud size is is uh, larger than the gravitational radius, but uh, uh, if this is uh, sufficiently small, then the, uh, this uh, cloud mass at the saturation uh, amplitude 
is still much smaller than the black hole mass. So, the, uh, so this effect is not uh, neg negligible, <laughs> uh, especially when the FA is much smaller than M Planck. So the first uh, we should answer what happens when the cloud grows uh, from the small uh, small cloud. At the beginning, the uh, maybe some uh, fastest growing mode uh, will dominate, and so from that stage, uh, you know, if we evolve the cloud adiabatically, then uh, what happens? So then, uh, so for this purpose, we use the, the dynamical renormalization group uh, method. Uh, so the, uh, we construct uh, the, the solution perturbatively. So the, the zero solar solution is just a single uh, linear super radiant mode with some fixed uh, L, N, and omega. Uh, omega has some imaginary part, okay? And uh, so this is uh, some super radiant mode. And the amplitude is a function of T0. T0 is some pivot uh, uh, time. Uh, you see, so this is uh, some uh, reference time. And uh, uh, of course, now we can uh, naively uh, calculate the first order and the second order perturbation. Uh, but uh, uh, so you, typically we have some secular growing sun, but here the situation is a little bit different uh, because uh, the omega zero, so this uh, zero order frequency have uh, some imaginary part uh, that is much, much smaller than the real part of the omega zero. So this is the reason why the standard numerical simulation is uh, difficult for this system, because uh, so if uh, we wait uh, the, the, uh, for the, the crowd to grow, a uh, crowd to grow, uh, so in that case, uh, we have to evolve the, the system uh, uh, for uh, many uh, times of the dynamical time. So that is uh, you know, computationally quite expensive, and so it's quite difficult uh, to perform the reliable uh, numerical simulation. So th this is the reason. And, uh, but here, the, we, we have the, this kind of small imaginary part. And so the, uh, if we perform this kind of uh, uh, you know, the, uh, perturbative expansion, then we do not have the uh, ordinary uh, secular term. But instead, uh, uh, we have the term uh, which diverge uh, when omega zero, uh, imaginary part of omega zero uh, uh, is sent to zero. Uh, but of course, if we send the, the, this imaginary part of omega, omega zero to zero, uh, then uh, we have secular time <laughs> again. Uh, but uh, so the, if uh, we take into account this finite value of imaginary part of omega zero, then uh, there is no secular growth. But uh, uh, instead, uh, of course, no, the, without this secular growth, uh, actually the, the amplitude changes and uh, actually uh, it exponentially grows. Anyway, anyway, so the, uh, if we perform this kind of uh, naive uh, perturbation, uh, then the, uh, <coughs> uh, uh, the, this iterative solution contains the term which diverges uh, when the imaginary part of omega zero is sent to zero. And uh, so that must be subtracted. Uh, so the, to, and so this kind of counter term that is uh, you know, proportional to the original phi zero. And uh, yeah, so this is just a normalization of this original amplitude. And uh, uh, of course, you know, this uh, psi one and psi two, this is uh, the second order normalization. But uh, the, so these questions must be chosen so that uh, the amplitude is finite in this uh, limit. But uh, this uh, does not completely determine uh, the C1 and C2. And so here appears uh, some uh, scheme dependence. And this is uh, uh, related to the arbitrariness of the definition of the amplitude. So that when we uh, call some uh, you know, uh, amplitude of the action, then uh, it, its definition is not uh, completely uh, unique. And so that depending on the choice of the definition, the, uh, this, uh, the, the counter term changes. Anyway, so the uh, and so uh, I yeah I also have to explain why do we need to go to the second order at least. Uh, so the reason is because the dissipative effect appears only from the second order perturbation. So we want to see the balance between the dissipative part and the, 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 the exponential increase uh, due to the radiance, and so that we have to take into account the, the second order effect. 
And uh, uh, after constructing uh, this uh, second order solution, uh, then uh, we uh, uh, make this uh, renormalization group equation. Uh, that, is, that simply means that uh, this uh, expression phi uh, should not depend on this uh, pivot uh, no, difference time uh, T0. And uh, then uh, we obtain the evolution equation for the amplitude. And uh, so we uh, chose uh, the, uh, the counter time so that uh, only the radiative dissipation contributes to the amplitude evolution, uh, except for this uh, the leading order superradian time. Yeah, so the, depending on the choice of the, uh, the counter time, the, this expression changes because uh, the, if we change uh, the definition of the amplitude, then uh, of course, no, this uh, expression changes. But so here we chose that. Uh, so that uh, the, this uh, this uh, linear term uh, is a uh, superadiant instability term, and uh, this uh, can be interpreted as uh, due to uh, the term due to the radiation to the infinity. And then once we fix uh, this, uh, you know, the counter term, then uh, uh, delta omega, the shift of the frequency uh, can be uh, written down in this way. And we have the quadratic term and the cardiac term. And uh, uh, of course, you know, that if you look at this uh, expression, then the amplitude saturate uh, when the A to force uh, becomes uh, this uh, uh, number. And we initially expected that the saturation, uh, saturation amplitude is small enough, and uh, since the uh, imaginary part of omega zero is uh, very small, extremely small, uh, typically 10 to minus seven or something like that. However, we found that uh, at the saturation amplitude, uh, the second term, uh, comparing this, uh, you know, uh, these two terms, the second term uh, dominates. <laughs> and so the, our expectation was, was wrong. And so this is the plot of this uh, the ratio in log, uh, log scale. And uh, so the horizontal axis is, uh, I cannot see it, uh, this is A, uh, the spin of the black hole. And uh, this is the mass parameter normalized by the black hole mass. Okay, so <laughs> uh, so we couldn't uh, construct. Uh, oh, uh, there, there was some problem. Oh, oh it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so the, within the validity range of the parabolic approach, uh, saturation uh, with uh, radiation and uh, uh, the superradiance uh, balance, uh, so this uh, kind of saturation did not occur. And the possible scenario is the saturation may occur in highly uh, nonlinear regime or there's some uh, Bosnova type uh, explosive uh, you know, the phenomena may happen. So the after Bosnova uh, state uh, with several superadiant or the non superadiant mode uh, simultaneously excited. So that uh, kind of situation will be realized. And uh, so, so this situation is uh, quite different from the current setup. So the current set, in the current setup, uh, we consider adiabatic evolution starting with uh, some, uh, some M0 and omega zero. And uh, then, uh, so the, uh, what is excited is uh, just uh, M is uh, N times M0, and then the omega is N times omega zero. Then the superradiance condition is, uh, you know, uh, defined, uh, so yeah, is uh, determined by this relation. And so the, if the omega and the M scale in the same way, then the always the superradiant condition is uh, satisfied. Uh, so this means that uh, there is uh, no mode which fall into the black hole. So the always the, the all modes are superadian. But uh, if uh, we consider the the, uh, the situation after Bosnova, I will not explain the details. But uh, the fallback to the black hole is possible. So the situation is completely different. Okay. So the, this is the first part, and I think uh, I do not have much time. <laughs> Uh, shall we, shall we move, uh, move to the second one? Uh, actually, so the, the topic is completely uh, changed. And uh, I'd like to talk about uh, black hole echoes. And uh, so there was a claim that the echoes might have been detected in the LIGO gravitational wave events uh, after the merger. So this is uh, uh, the, the, the signal after, after the binary merger. Uh, binary coalescence. And so, this, so the black hole, the single black hole is formed, but uh, still some uh, uh, excitations are remaining outside. And uh, so that remaining uh, excitation uh, will uh, travel, uh, propagate to the infinity directly, but uh, some of, uh, part of them uh, will fall into the black hole. But if the uh, uh, hypothetical barrier near the event horizon is formed, then uh, this uh, wave will be, will be uh, reflected back 
And uh, but uh, most of them will be reflecting back again by this angular momentum barrier. But some part uh, will penetrate through this angular momentum barrier, and we will see the first echo like this. And uh, but uh, this, uh, you know, this bounce the uh, wave uh, will be reflected again and again, and so that we will see the second and third echo. And uh, in this uh, original paper uh, with Edouard, uh, they assumed the uh, reflecting boundary at the Planck distance from the horizon and uh, throwing, uh, slowly decaying echoes of the same waveform. So the waveform is not changed uh, by this, uh, among these uh, you know, echoes. Uh, but all, all, only the overall phase is uh, changed by pi. So the, so the waveform is completely flipped. And the uh, echo period, delta t echo, this one, this uh, uh, is the one predicted by the angular momentum barrier, this one and uh, the reflection uh, boundary. And uh, so, the, so this uh, distance in the R star total coordinate uh, determines this uh, delta T echo. Right? And uh, they found that uh, the, the, uh, there is some signal at the three sigma level. And we considered more appropriate uh, temperate, uh, physically appropriate temperate. Uh, and uh, so if we consider uh, such kind of temperate, then uh, uh, that will increase the significance. And we consider some uh, black hole perturbation and uh, calculate uh, the, the, the waveform of the echo. And what we found uh, is uh, so so the at the uh, uh, so so depending on the number uh, of echo. So the first echo uh, uh, the, the the spectrum uh, behaves like this, uh, but uh, the second one becomes like this, and fourth and eighth and sixteenth. Uh, uh, you can see that. Uh, uh, ah, sorry. So this uh, horizontal axis is the frequency. So the low frequency mode uh, cannot penetrate uh, the uh, angular momentum barrier so easily, but the uh, high frequency mode uh, penetrates uh, the barrier so easy, uh, easily. And so that this uh, part uh, disappears, uh, high frequency part disappears uh, earlier, but the low frequency mode uh, remains uh, longer. Okay. And uh, the waveform is uh, totally uh, different from the simple repetition of the initial outgoing wave uh, waveform used by the analysis by original paper and, uh, or, or, uh, and also other groups. And, uh, and we also calculated the uh, uh, echo spectrum uh, excited by a small particle falling into a uh, car black hole. And th in that case, uh, the first echo becomes very large, and uh, but the second and third uh, are the same, similar to what we expected before. Um, and uh, the, then the question is how does the significance of the echo uh, signal change? Uh, by taking into account uh, this kind of uh, more physically motivated waveform, and uh, the answer is uh, uh, we found no signal, unfortunately. And uh, we performed some uh, analysis, but I will not. <laughs> uh, I will not explain uh, this one uh, maybe uh, because I do not have. Uh, but I maybe I have time. <laughs> so the, uh, we repeated the analysis uh, that, that is uh, done by Abel Edouard. And uh, uh, actually, what they did is uh, something like this. They defined this uh, uh, variable x. x is the ratio between uh, d echo. d echo is uh, this uh, fast uh, uh, separation and, uh, in time. And uh, delta d echo is uh, the, this, uh, the period uh, between the first and second, and also second and third. Uh, so this ratio x uh, so is expected to be close to unity. Uh, if we take uh, this kind of picture, the, the, you know, the reflecting boundary. So they uh, identify that this region of X uh, is a signal region, okay? And uh, they estimated the background. And uh, so the background is, uh, uh, so, so they perform the same analysis uh, for uh, X larger than nine, and where no signal is uh, expected. And they uh, define uh, uh, the T value, the p-value is defined by this. Uh, so the, so the, the, the numerator is the number of reference data uh, with uh, SNR greater than the uh, SNR for the event. Event means that the, the, uh, the, 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 no, the event uh, uh, within this range. And uh, so this is divided by the number of all reference data. Now, of course, no, the, uh, if this the SNR, uh, signal, sorry, SNR is a signal to noise ratio. Uh, for the event is large enough, then the, this number is, becomes very small, and so as a result, uh, this p value becomes very small. 
So p value is much smaller than unity uh, will mean that uh, some signal is present. So that is a way. And uh, I will not uh, discuss the detail, but uh, so so this is the result uh, for, for the so, uh, this uh, uh, GWTC2 uh, data. And uh, uh, the p value uh, is, uh, yeah, uh, is not uh, very small always, but uh, sometimes it's small. And uh, uh, actually, so this uh, analysis is done uh, uh, by uh, Nami Uchikata. And uh, she stressed a lot that uh, so this uh, small p value is, uh, realize, is realized uh, when the, the SNR is small. So there is some correlation. We should, yeah, we should uh, keep it in mind. So here, uh, this is again, uh, p value is small, but uh, SNR is less. Uh, and uh, sometimes, uh, you know, this p value is large. Uh, like this, and so uh, you may say, say that okay, sometimes more, sometimes less. But uh, if you plot uh, this uh, cumulative distribution of the p value, so this is a p value and the cumulative distribution, and this blue curve is uh, this result, there seems to be something, but I don't know what it is. Okay, and uh, related to this uh, reflective boundary, so, so recently we are thinking about uh, uh, another. Uh, Point of, uh, another uh, aspect, and so that so this uh, boundary condition may leave some another footprint, uh, which is unpublished uh, uh, work, and uh, so there might be some related work. And so, if you know something, uh, please tell me. And so, that we focus on the extreme mass ratio in spiral MD system. Uh, so, this uh, system provides uh, the place to test gravity very, uh, very nicely. And uh, so, this is uh, why this uh, is a uh, uh, <coughs> suitable for the test of gravity. Uh, the reason is that uh, uh, the, the radiation reaction is uh, very weak. And so the, uh, actually, so the uh, orbital evolution is very small. And so the uh, many orbital cycles are observed before merger. And as a result, uh, it is easy to detect uh, small correct, uh, to detect small correction from uh, small deviation from GR. So that is the reason why the, this uh, MD system is uh, nice to, uh, and, and also the you know, system is uh, very clean, expected to be very clean. And uh, for example, for the circular orbit case, the uh, orbital frequency omega evolves uh, like this, d omega dt uh, will be determined by the d omega dE and the dE dt. And d omega dE is a relation between the omega, uh, yeah, omega and the energy of the system. And uh, this is uh, related, uh, uh, yeah, so just by looking at the geodesic equation. And uh, the EDT uh, is uh, evaluated from the energy loss due to gravitational wave, okay? And uh, uh, so that then, uh, so, so what kind of effect uh, uh, appears, uh, uh, effect of the reflectivity boundary uh, on this uh, waveform? And uh, so energy loss rate uh, will be modified. But uh, it is not uh, as simple as just setting the horizon flux. So there is flux, inner flux uh, you know, that fall into the horizon. Uh, but uh, so it is not uh, true that uh, just setting the horizon flux to zero uh, uh, is correct. Uh, no, it is not true that, uh, yeah, uh, setting flux, yeah, this is not correct. Okay. <laughs> and if the gravitational waves are reflected by the near uh, horizon boundary, so that is hypothetical boundary. Uh, uh, so if uh, this, uh, the, the gravitational wave is affected by the near horizon boundary uh, escape to the infinity, uh, then uh, uh, naively the net energy loss uh, is, is, is not changed from the GR gauge. So the orbital revolution doesn't change. But uh, there are several complications. And the first is that uh, this wave is not sim just simply reflected but uh, it's uh, you know, replaced back and forth uh, by this angular momentum barrier. And another complication is that when, the, uh, when we evaluate the flux at infinity, actually, so the, there are, uh, so the first wave and the echo, first echo, the you know, second echo, the third echo, so all are the uh, super, uh, superpose. And then the, uh, when we calculate the energy flux, there is some interference. So then we have to take into account this interference. Uh, but uh, the method to compute the reflective uh, uh, compute uh, the uh, something is missing. Uh, the flux uh, with a reflecting boundary is uh, quite easy. 
So usually the, the when we calculate the, the ingoing and the outgoing tax, uh, we use the green function method. So the so we construct the green function by using some homogeneous solution of the radial equation. So this is the uh, uh, upgoing boundary condition, the ingoing boundary condition. With this uh, uh, homogeneous solutions uh, constructed, then we can construct the uh, uh, green function. Uh, this is just a you know, user test function, and uh, W is a long scan. And uh, okay, then uh, so for this uh, the change of the, the boundary condition is just uh, uh, yeah. For for the change of this uh, boundary condition, uh, we just need to, uh, to perform the following replacement. Uh, this R in this uh, no purely in going uh, the way uh, should be replaced with some R in tilde. That is some you know, uh, superposition of the R in and the R out. And uh, so by uh, uh, appropriately choosing this uh, value of beta, beta uh, the reflection rate uh, can be controlled. And uh, then, uh, so this is the result. Uh, delta F, uh, this uh, flux, uh, uh, the change of, from the GR case uh, without uh, reflecting boundary case. And so the, this is the, you know, the flux at the infinity and flux on horizon and after modification minus uh, the original flux. And so this is a preliminary result, uh, but uh, so depending on the frequency that we have the, this kind of spike and the blue part is a negative and the uh, orange, uh, red part is uh, positive. And uh, so there is some spike that is uh, corresponding to the resonance. Uh, so between uh, this uh, cavity, uh, in this uh, cavity uh, between the, the, the reflective boundary and the angular momentum barrier. Yeah. And, uh, Oh, the so, time is over. Uh, is over. Okay. Please. Yeah, I will finish. Yeah. So sharp resonance peaks appear, but the uh, average uh, almost vanishes. Uh, however, the, so there is uh, this kind of oscillation, and so the unique signal uh, appears and uh, can be expected. Actually, so that we calculated uh, the phase uh, uh, evolution. Uh, so this is uh, the change from the GR case. And uh, yeah, uh, so th th there is some trend, uh, uh, but uh, so this trend uh, may, might be confused with uh, some other effect. But uh, if uh, we uh, subtract this uh, slowly varying uh, part, then we have this kind of oscillation. And uh, this oscillation, uh, so this is uh, uh, the unit year. And what we consider is uh, this uh, kind of system. And uh, then the uh, uh, amplitude of oscillation it can be uh, as large as order one. So uh, this might be observed, uh, detectable. Okay, so this is a summary, and, uh, but I will not uh, read the summary. So thank you very much. You can read the summary just as well. <laughs> uh, please read. <laughs> uh... So questions, please. Uh, uh, please uh, raise your hands and ask questions. I'm raising hands. Uh -huh. So uh, I, I have a question. What is the most promising prediction uh, from your analysis? What is the, the best way to detect uh, some new physics, in your opinion. <laughs> that, that's a difficult question. And uh, so the, we have to try the, you know, all the possibilities and uh, yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, theoretically interesting thing is that, uh, so this uh, kind of action stuff is uh, theoretically motivated. And so you know, compared with the uh, other, I, Kind of uh, modification uh, that's more likely, uh, but of course, uh, the, yeah, uh, we yeah it, it may turn out that uh, we just give some upper bound. Uh, mm -hmm. in the end. Uh, look, um, I have other question uh, concerning this uh, spinning clouds. Uh, again, um, I uh, I remember the work of uh, Herdera and, and Rado, who constructed stationary uh, solutions, uh, stationary, uh, surrounded by complex uh, vector field with spinning phase. 
and then the uh, the angular velocity of uh, so this is rotating phase, and so uh, uh, and uh, proportional to i omega t minus m phi, where m is uh, is a uh, m is a integer, uh, and omega is is a uh, angular velocity of horizon, and m azimuthal quantum number takes values one, two, three. And then in simplest case, uh, M is equal to one. So they get solution surrounded by this simplest uh, cloud with uh, M equals to one. But then uh -huh. there was there was an analysis of, of a guy from Cambridge called Santos, who showed that this uh, cloud uh, decays uh, slowly uh, by producing another cloud with M equals to two then to m equals to three and so on. So, so they uh, found a, a cascade of- uh, uh, of Yeah. Yeah. Did you see something right. similar in your- uh, Yeah, actually, so uh, we, we, yeah, we consider that this kind of possibility and uh, uh, in our paper, we made some uh, similar uh, analysis. And so the here, the, so the, uh, I just consider the simplest uh, situation uh, when uh, we have only one uh, one type of cloud, and actually, so the the helical symmetry is. Uh, so where is it? Something here. Yeah, yeah. So helical symmetry is maintained, and so the only this kind of modes are excited. But uh, if we yeah, consider the situation uh, when the, the other mode uh, originally exists and then the, the transition occurs. Uh, but uh, if we start with uh, the natural uh, initial condition, uh, it's a little bit uh, uh, difficult to find the saturation uh, before the uh, nonlinearity becomes significantly large. Mm -hmm. So your analysis is linear. Ah, right, yeah, yeah, of, of course it's, it's linear, right. Uh, yeah. yeah, so the, if uh, we consider, uh, yeah, just consider the linear analysis, then uh, so this kind of uh, process occurs, actually, yeah. And so the, so even if uh, we start with m equal one, uh, then uh, if there is some crowd uh, with m equal two, uh, yeah, then uh, uh, the transition occurs from the m equal one to two. Okay, good, uh, thank and, you. Uh, uh, yes, yeah. yes, please, please, please uh, continue. Uh, otherwise, there is a question of uh, of Che Yu Chen. Uh, so uh, let me admit. Yeah, please, uh, please go. On. Uh, yes. Yes. Okay. Thank Thank you for the talk. So my question is about in the in the Emory case so when you calculate uh, the waveform of the Emory system in in this in this model. Did you consider just just the equatorial orbits, or did you also consider the general inclined orbits? Uh, so in this case, uh, we just uh, consider the uh, equatorial uh, orbit, and uh, oh, okay. that's, uh, yeah, that's for the demonstration. Of course, uh, we can extend uh, <laughs> this kind of analysis to more generic oh. orbit. I think uh, some fraction of the uh, Emory system is uh, circular and um, maybe some aligned, but uh, yeah, uh, what is interesting is uh, more you know, uh, eccentric and uh, inclined. One. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's right. Okay. For the Thank test you. of uh, gravity, yeah. Mm. But uh, for this purpose, uh, I think uh, <laughs> some some uh, you know the orbit uh, on the equatorial plane is easier to analyze. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course, of course, yes, right. yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So, uh, other questions? Uh, uh, I have maybe last question. Your axions. Uh, what is their mass? And uh, oh. where where they come from? This uh, they inspired by what? So these these axions. Uh, the axion mass is uh, yeah relatively arbitrary, but uh, for the observational relevance, actually, so the, I think uh, so they have already you know uh, gave some constraint uh, from this uh, uh, spin black hole, and so that if we consider that. Uh, in the black hole, the, the, uh, which becomes the target of the LIGO valve uh, observation, then uh, so this uh, mass range is uh, the sweet spot. So very, you know, depending on the mass of the black hole, the sweet spot changes. 
Mm -hmm. So the, when when the, the black hole, the, you know, the horizon radius is comparable to the Compton radius of the uh, action map, action, uh, then uh, you know the cloud uh, cloud uh, uh, so growth rate is a maximum. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if uh, the mass is uh, much smaller and much larger, then uh, you know the, the, this growth is not so efficient. Oh. Okay, thank you. Uh, are there any, any, any more questions? So if uh, there are no questions, let's thank you, Takahira.